Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with the second half of my June wrap-up. I do chat about the first nine books that I read in the month in my previous video I did around the first half of the month, so I will go ahead and link that down below. I read nine then, and I have read seven books since then, which is kind of, it's good but bad. Like for me, that's not that impressive. I usually read at least 10 and it has been a crazy busy month. I went to Book Bonanza Wednesday to Sunday, so I was there for quite a while and didn't read any at all while I was doing that. And I've definitely been feeling like a little, a little bit slumpy, but I am in the middle of two books right now that I probably will finish soon, but I am going on a trip this weekend. Today is Friday that I'm filming this and it's going to go up Sunday and I know that I think the first is on Monday but I'm gonna do this a little early so I could possibly finish a book tomorrow and that would bring this up to eight but I have seven books and I did not get to do a like 24-hour reading vlog this half of the month which I usually get knock out like four books in one day so I will go ahead and get to the books that I read I read a lot of audiobooks and I would love to get back into reading a lot more which I think I will do in July because I'm not traveling anywhere in July so hopefully I read more. But everything I read was was pretty fine. I only had, uh, I had two five stories actually, which is surprising. But the first one is The Fiction Between Us by Julia Olivia. And I'm giving this one, I think, three and a half stars. I feel like three is a little too harsh. So she had a huge crush on him in high school. His friends tormented her when they found out that she had a crush on him. And he kind of just like went along with it and didn't stop them. So she has been like horrified ever since. And now they are both working at this amusement park, theme park kind of thing. And she is one of the characters there. And he works in security. And then something happens where he has to act like the ranger randy or something some character that's dating her and gets thrown into that and then she is trying to grapple with the fact that she doesn't have a degree and if she's going to be qualified enough to be able to work at the park as like someone who creates things and like writes things and it goes from there and it was fine I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. And that's really how I felt about this. I've been feeling that way a lot about books lately, which is making me sad because like I wish I had so many more five-star reads. And this one was cute. Like that's what it was. I don't think it's her best because I've seen people love different ones in this series. I also didn't realize it was the, I think, second book in the series. This isn't book one, which I didn't realize, but Hoopla does have a lot of her audiobooks. I would love to try her new series out. But overall, this was cute. I did like the setting. I loved how it was in a amusement park. It felt very just like summery, perfect for the current season, but it was unique. And that's really all I have to say about it. So three and a half stars. I don't know if I'm going to round up or down yet, but it was just, it was, it was good. Then I read two books for reading booktubers, five star reads. So the first one that I read as part of that video, that's part of this wrap up is The Problem with Players by Brittany C. Cherry. This one is a second chance romance and I gave this one also three and a half stars. This one, I really love the beginning. The heroine is currently dating someone. She's a baseball coach and he is an ex baseball player and he gets hired to coach and he initially gets hired to be the head coach, taking her job and then and he realizes how mad she is about that so he takes the assistant coach position and lets her be the head coach still and there's a lot of animosity between them especially on her side because he broke her heart and left her for baseball and now he's back and she is engaged though to someone else and this does deal very heavily with depression so definitely know that going in and the hero also lost a close friend to suicide so he's dealing with a lot as well so this definitely takes a serious turn but the beginning was really angsty and I really liked it when she was still engaged but the second half was definitely more serious and I did not fall in love with the romance as much because it didn't feel like there was as much angst and the plot was just okay because it was just them with their team, their high school team winning games but we didn't really like see a lot of the baseball so that's why this one's a three and a half star. I probably will round down for Goodreads because I just did not love this as much as I wanted to. I have read so many by Brittany C. Cherry that have been like so emotional and angsty and so good and this one just did not feel that way to me. It was still a emotional romance but I wasn't in love with it as much as I wanted to be. Then I listened to the audiobook of Come the Morning by Shannon Drake which was our historical hellions pick for this month and this one I gave four stars maybe Maybe 4.5 more like four I think I'll settle on a four this was really entertaining I think that the romance took a backseat to the plot 
and the heroine did run away a lot so the heroine is living in this kingdom it's medieval and the king was friends with her father who's passed away he was like some great legend and they're like descended from Vikings so there's like a lot of animosity towards people who could be Vikings and the king says that she's going to marry someone of his choice and she freaks out and she runs away and as she's running away she gets caught by the guy she's supposed to marry but she doesn't know that and he doesn't know that and so then he basically like makes her stranded in a boat in the middle of some body of water she can't get out he throws away the oars and then he leaves and finds the king figures out that he's supposed to marry her and so then it goes on from there the heroine runs away a lot she's in love with a friend and he's wants to marry his mistress so they both do want to marry separate people which is interesting because we do get to see him having relations with his mistress which I feel like is very common in older historical romances but they end up falling in love after they have to get married and it was fun I mean like there was a lot of action definitely she either runs away or gets kidnapped quite a bit and I found it fun like it had a more light-hearted tone it definitely reminded me more of like Julie Garwood style historical romances especially as like a medieval Scottish setting but it the romance wasn't the best. I mean, like, they honestly didn't even like each other until after he had sex with her and realized that she wasn't gonna have a baby with someone else because she was a virgin when they had sex. So, and then she was, like, overcome with lust and, like, oh my god, I really do like you. So, that, that was really the romance there and the heroine does make a lot of annoying decisions. But, like I said, I was very entertained. I listened to the audiobook pretty much all in one day and I had so much fun with it. So, four stars for this one. Then I did listen to the audiobook of Here We Go Again by Alison Cochran and I gave this one five stars. I knew I was love this. I have loved so many books by this author and this one is a sapphic romance where the heroines knew each other from high school I believe and actually kissed each other in high school. One is very open about her sexuality. She is gay and she has had different relationships and it shows her in the beginning breaking up with someone who was just more like a casual fling whose like name she didn't even know because she called her by her last name and they're all teachers which I was worried about but this does not take place during the school year. This takes place during the summer because as a former teacher I don't love reading books about teachers but this one she they're both really close with their high school teacher and he is dying of cancer. And so the other heroine is very like straight laced, very organized, very uptight, and she is also gay, but she hasn't really like told a lot of people that. And so they had actually kissed at a party and then things went south between them. So they don't get along, but their teacher, their old teacher, says, I want you to take me on a crossroad trip so I can go visit my like cottage thing that I have on the other side of the country. And so they get the, this van. It's a van they're gonna take around the country. And so they bring his dog and they have to follow the one heroine's very precise uptight plan and then completely derail it, end up going to like Arizona, even though they're trying to go to like Maine. And they end up also trying to find the person that was like the love of their teacher's life, like the one that got away. And it was very emotional. I definitely was tearing up during this because it is like a last hurrah for their favorite person dying of cancer. And so there is death in here. Just know that going in, but there's like dark humor to it. And and the two heroines are really getting to know each other. There's like only one bed sometimes because they have to share a hotel room and they end up really falling deeply for each other and I just really loved exploring their own relationships and their own identities and their relationship with one another and it was so good and so fun and perfect for summer. If you want a road trip romance, this is perfect. Definitely more serious and sad. Like if you want to cry, <laughs> read this one, but I loved it. Five stars. Then I can't find my copy of this. I have it somewhere. I listened to the audiobook of Catching Feelings by Alicia Thompson and I gave this one four stars. This one I saw a lot of people rate it really poorly because there's definitely a hidden identity slash like she is keeping a big secret from him. So she goes to a baseball game and she heckles the player. She's like doesn't know what she's doing and she says this joke to this one player and he starts crying and so she's like oh my god what did I do and so now she's horrified and her sister actually worked for like broadcasting for the baseball team and her sister's pregnant and so she asks her to take over for her to broadcast for the team so she does like interviews and stuff so she does and everybody knows she's a heckler though like they did a piece on her being the person that made this guy cry. She feels really bad so she writes out this apology about 
about like understanding being in a tough spot. She is divorced and she had married her brother's best friend and realized that like it was better in theory than like actually being married and so she's definitely grappling with that and she sends him this message and she had drafted it. She had started writing it in the Instagram app but then like went to her drafts and was drafting something. It didn't include the whole part about who she was and so they start this really genuine conversation together and he has no idea she was the one that was heckling him and now she's working for the team and they're getting to know each other in person and he's still talking to her through the app and they're falling in love while they're texting and then like kind of into each other in real life but he doesn't know it's the same person but she does and she keeps that secret from him for a very long time and so people didn't like that in their Goodreads reviews I don't mind a little bit of a messy romance and I totally get where she was coming from where it was just like how do you bring that up after it's been so long and she didn't mean to deceive him and then didn't know how to like tell him who she was and she was just really falling for him and it was fun we do get a lot of baseball and he did lose his brother so there's a lot that has to deal with death and grief and he's just going through a lot and then trying to be a good player so I thought it was fun I really enjoyed reading it it was definitely emotional and a little bit messy and I I'm not afraid of mess, so I had fun, so I gave this one four stars. Then for that reading booktubers five star reads video, I did read Happy Place by Emily Henry, and I gave this five stars. Probably my favorite of the month. One of my favorites of the month. It was so good. This is a second chance romance, and it does have a little bit of miscommunication, but like not really. So some people were saying they don't like miscommunication. This had a lot of it, but they were just like really right person, extremely wrong time. They both are at points in their lives where she is in her program to be a doctor and so they have to move to a certain place and he just doesn't know what he wants to do with his life and we are flashing to the present. They were all at this like lake house on a vacation with their friends that they've gone to every year since they became friends in college and we flash back between like them meeting and dating and falling in love to now where they've been broken up for like months and they were engaged and no one knows that they broke up like not even his family knows that they broke up and this one is just very emotional and I was a little bit annoyed with the hero because he was someone who self-deprecates a lot and feels like he's just like dumb he has no purpose in life like he's really not gonna amount to anything and I was just like find your passion like do something he does and there's really a reason to why he felt that way that we really explore near the end and it was just heartbreaking to read and you really understand like why they had to break up because like like they could not be happy together because of so many things working against them and they just like went back to their happy place together and had to acknowledge things that they were going through and act like they were together because nobody knows that they broke up so they were on this vacation and had to pretend to be dating still or be in love and be engaged so I love this so much there's so many quotable moments and this was just like such a deep like agonizing love and that's my favorite kind of romances so i'm happy i finally read this five stars i loved it and the last book i have to talk about is savor it by tara dewitt i have like 40 pages left so i'm gonna already go ahead and talk about this because i will be finishing it before the end of the month this one is sitting at a solid four stars and i don't see that changing this is a very just like not cliche but like the epitome of a small town romance. We have the hero moving to this town because he has been going through a lot in life and he is the single guardian to his niece and she's a teenager and she's definitely going through a lot too and kind of rebelling and so they move to this small town because he is going to consult on this restaurant because he's a Michelin star chef and feels like broken. He's like I can't create anything like I don't know what to do and so he decides to move to Oregon and is next to this farm that the heroine owns and she has all these crazy animals they always get out all the time and she like asks the niece to like watch her goose while she's helping something and the first night there they have to call the fire department and police because they think something's happening and that ends up being her brothers and so then she comes over and it's just like very small town and they end up fake dating. She has an ex who has already moved on with someone and she like just feels really weird about it. So he's like, hey, like if I kiss you right now, they'll see. And so like he does. So a little bit of fake dating in there and it's just like a very small town cute romance. She's going to be helping him with this restaurant and she's a teacher and he is a chef and I'm really enjoying it. I love some of the other books I've read by her more, but just a really cute small town romance that's definitely very summery, and I'm just having a fun time reading it. So four stars for this one, and once I get to the end, like I said, I don't see that changing. It's very cute, and I just really do love single guardian romances where one of them is taking care of a child that they might be related to or that they have to take in, and they just like are exploring just like unknown territory and are barely staying 
above water and trying to figure out this new relationship and I really love that being explored so I really did enjoy this one. And those are the seven books that I read in June for the second half of the month so I read a total of 16 books which is very low for me. There was a point where I was reading 30 books a month but not anymore. I'm way too busy to be doing that, but I do hope to read more in July for sure. But let me know if you've read these and what your thoughts were or what you read this month. I would love to hear and that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.